And you know, this is not a brother establishment. I was about to come. Okay? So, so brother, please let's get your question. Now, the question is, does space have boundaries? Oh, yes. Excellent. See, I was trying to get to that. <laughs> but you see, the, the reason, I got to give you a little background. One of the things that I have to deal with, I was giving a lecture in City College, thanks to the Black Study Department, the physics department has never invited me. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that. Okay? But, Len Jeffries and the Black Studies Department invited me. So I was given. What seems to be an implant of when Mr. Capo student was in the audience and says, well, what about um, the multi universe? Uh, is it an expanding universe? Is that all that and all that? Which basically, uh, you know, deals with your question. You see, the universe cannot have any boundaries. The universe cannot have any boundaries. They're talking about expanding universe, and the question that that has on Mike Siegel show is what? The Art Bell Show. Art Bell Show. What? When they ask me the question, well, you know what I said, listen, I'm not trying to make anybody look that bad. All I'm doing is telling the truth and nothing but the truth. But, sorry, I appreciate the efforts to express a thought process. But when that thought process is in error, you got to be, you know, rational enough to say, okay, I understand. There's no such a thing as an expanding universe. How could there be? Otherwise, what would you call where the expanding term? Yeah, what is the destination? What do you call that? <laughs> what do you call the thing beyond the boundary? Mathematics. You have to have a boundary. That's right. Because, because then there's something beyond the boundary. But there has to be something to expand. There's something that, yeah, that's right. And that space, you, you don't say that that's the universe. That is the universe. That's the universe. So therefore, the universe has no boundary. Okay, but the wave itself, yes. is that perceptible to us? The wave, does, does the wave have, have boundaries? Absolutely. Huh? Well, you see, well, see, there, there's a nature of a wave that is dissipation, you know. I mean, you look at the, uh, what you call the, uh, the ripples, okay? That's a wave. That's a wave front there when you see the ripples moving up. Yeah. Where, it, you know, it dissipates as it moves from the source. Mm. Right? But you have more to wait to drop a stone there and the ripples... Yeah. yeah. Well, there comes a time where it seems as if it has disappeared. Mm. That's Gaga. That's Gaga. That's, that's may, may, may I say something to ask this? Okay. All of you Kabbalistic students, listen carefully. Think of what is the, un, the, the unknowable boundary. Remember we said that the universe is almost 90% invisible, they're now saying. We, they can't find the universe, which really is that they don't have the perception to see beyond certain points. Mm. Well, in ancient Kabbalah, our, for that which is all to have represented itself, it could not create because there were no boundaries to create beyond. Thus, it had to contract. In that contraction did it create space for the manifestation of itself. So the space now becomes that quote-unquote 10% into which whatever we see as infinity is, a, see again, holographically speaking, and as a hologram, the small portion, the whole total thing is represented in the one part. So as he said, we are sitting inside of one humongous hydrogen atom, for one of the best in the atoms. That contraction from the totality became the atom which by its constant evolution towards consciousness supersedes and envelops that which it came from, thus taking it back to its opposite self, which gives it all consciousness of itself, bringing it back to point zero again, as you said, that's right. at that point. That's right.